Welcome to Ms. Mojo. We've put together some videos to remember Matthew Perry's ability to make us laugh, but more importantly, times that he helped make Chandler just as much a friend to us. Afraid to ask him? Could not be more terrified. <laughs> well, I think you should seriously consider the marriage thing. Give Rachel another chance to dress up like Princess Bubble Yum. <laughs> Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for times Chandler was the one we could depend on for a hysterical, yet brutal, sarcastic comment. Okay, I was wrong. That's what they used to cover Connecticut. <laughs> Number 10, A.A. A. Milne. When I get back, it's Chair City. And I'm the guy who's sitting in a chair. As far as episodes where the whole cast is iconic, the one where no one's ready is one that fires on all cylinders. We open on Chandler deciding not to spare Joey the horror of drinking fat. The evening escalates into 20 minutes of each member of the group raising Ross's blood pressure by being hyper-focused on something other than getting out the door. While we sympathize with Ross's plight, Chandler simply wanting his seat back is relatable. Well, it's not like I went to Spain. <laughs> I went to the bathroom. You knew I was coming back. What's the big deal? Sit somewhere else. The big deal is I was sitting there last. So, it's my seat. He tries every intimidation tactic, including sitting on Joey, but his friend can't be moved. We must say Chandler may need to brush up on his Winnie the Pooh readings, but his point stands. All right, you will notice that I am fully dressed. I, in turn, have noticed that you are not. So, in the words of A.A. A. Milne, Get out of my chair, dill hole. Conversely, Joey has his Chandler impression down to an art. Look at me, I'm Chandler. Could I be wearing any more clothes? <laughs> Maybe if I wasn't going commando. <laughs> Number nine, personal and professional. Joey's role as Dr. Drake Ramore on Days of Our Lives is arguably his best and most well-known role. So I just talked to one of the dual writers today and- What is dual? Days of our lives. <laughs> anyway, you're not gonna believe it. My character is coming out of his coma. So when he gets the call that the good doctor is coming out of his coma, he rushes over to tell everyone. But he follows it up with an apparent non sequitur that he'll also be receiving a new brain. Chandler, never one to waste an opportunity, interjects with yet another one of his clever remarks. And, and, and not only that, I'm getting a new brain. <laughs> So great things are happening at work and in your personal life. Call this a fastball because Chandler hits this joke out of the park. Not to derail from Chandler here, but Joey's pretty ruthless in this scene too. Case in point. <laughs> what? A brain transplant? It's ridiculous. Well, I think it's ridiculous that you haven't had sex in three and a half months. <laughs> Number eight, to be young again. When Joey tells his friends he's up for a part in a commercial playing a 19-year-old, they're pretty dubious. I gotta look good. I'm supposed to be playing a 19-year-old. <laughs> what? So when you said get up early, did you mean 1986? To show he can pass for a teenager, Joey dresses up like one, or at least his idea of one. His absurd outfit and use of youth slang has Chandler borderline speechless. Thankfully for our entertainment, he doesn't remain that way for long. Come on, am I 19 or what? <laughs> yes. On a scale from 1 to 10, 10 being the dumbest a person can look, you are definitely 19. While Joey may be trying to act off the hook here, it's more like he's off the charts ridiculous, as is Chandler's absolutely wicked burn. Yes, you can pass for 19. Really? Yes. Seriously? Seriously? Seriously, no. Okay? You can play your own age, which is 31. <gasps> Number seven, Bo Peep. Rachel's invitation to her ex's wedding leads to much hilarity for everyone else, especially since her bridesmaid's dress looks like something even a Barbie doll would consider too pink. Chandler's initial reactions involve a fit of laughter and calling her Princess Bubble Yum. His most devastating joke happens when Ross and Rachel drop by before the wedding. Now, with her complimentary hat, Rachel's outfit manages to get somehow pinker. I'm sorry, we don't have your sheep. The Little Bo Peep comparison is so perfect, we just have to commend whoever wrote the line. It even gets a coy smile out of actor Matthew Perry. Tonight, all I really wanted was to make it through this evening with... A little bit of grace and dignity. 
Well, I guess we can all agree that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Number six, same girl. At Central Perk, Chandler teases Ross about a woman he started dating. So, Ross, how was your date the other night? Did you tell her about the magical ride that starts with the flush of every toilet? After he leaves to call her, Joey arrives and reveals that he's also dating someone new, who coincidentally lives in the same place Ross's new belle does. Both also reveal that this mystery girl is seeing someone else. How'd it go? Oh, great. We're going out again Saturday. But I just found out she's also seeing some other guy. <laughs> really? Chandler, of course, puts two and two together and can barely contain his glee. Although he reluctantly gets up to leave, he has one parting savage moment where he asks both Ross and Joey the name of the woman they're dating, only to split when they say the same name. I wish I didn't have to go, believe me. <laughs> but unfortunately, I have to. Oh, um, by the way, what's the name of the girl you're dating? Kristen Lay. Bye! Chandler's a true agent of chaos in this moment, and we love it. Number 5. Monica on Camera Whenever we get a glimpse into the character's pasts, it's generally a recipe for some top-shelf comedy. You know what this is? This is us getting ready for the prom. You know what, you guys, we don't have to watch this. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's fun. 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 After Monica's parents drop off a box of her things, she finds a video of her and Rachel getting ready for prom that the gang decides to watch. Work on your music? <laughs> Let's just say much is revealed. We don't condone fat shaming, and this is certainly not Chandler's finest hour, but there's no denying that his quip here is among his most savage insults. Some girl ate Monica. <laughs> no, shut up, the camera adds 10 pounds. Uh, so how many cameras are actually on you? <laughs> Number four, might as well be walking on the... Stop staring at my wife's legs. No, no. Stop staring at your sister's legs. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just, how'd you get so tan? When Ross goes to a spray tan salon, the results are, as you might imagine, disastrous. He gets the count wrong and is sprayed unevenly, leaving him with a ridiculously dark front half and a pale back half. When Ross laments his misfortune to Monica and Chandler, the latter has a field day. Oh, and it gets worse. <laughs> Oh my god, you can do a duet of Ebony and Ivory all by yourself. <laughs> Although his remarks on Ross being able to perform Ebony and Ivory by himself are pretty cutting, his opening outburst is as red hot as its metaphor. There's something different. <laughs> I went to that tanning place your wife suggested. Was that place the sun? He may not have gotten a natural tan, but Ross still got sun burned. Number three, Q-tip. Many of Chandler's quips come with regards to Joey's, how do we put this, um, slow-wittedness. Oh, hey, Chandler, when you see Frankie, tell him Joey Tribbiani says hello. He'll know what it means. <laughs> you sure he's gonna be able to crack that code? But this line easily tops all the others. When Chandler asks his friends to recommend a good tailor, Joey suggests his longtime one, Frankie. Hey, anybody know a good tailor? You need some clothes altered? No, no, I'm just looking for a man to draw on me with chalk. He claims to have gone to him since he was 15, or 16, whenever 1990 was. At any rate, Chandler's cutting response is absolutely brutal. No, excuse me, 15. All right, when was 1990? Okay, you have to stop the Q-tip when there's resistance. The line is actually a favorite of Matthew Perry's, and it's no wonder since the actor reportedly came up with it himself. Even the physical comedy here is on point. Number two, Scottish. Monica and Chandler's wedding has everyone a buzz. Even Ross is looking to do something for his sister and best friend on their special day. Okay, well, uh, yeah, I guess I guess I could do that too. <laughs> two? <laughs> Yeah, I kind of uh, <clears throat> have something else planned for you guys. Unfortunately, he decides on learning to play the bagpipes. It's not long before the happy couple hear Ross practicing and become decidedly less happy. While Monica's setup is great, Chandler really goes for the jugular with his response. <laughs> Why is your family Scottish? Why is your family Ross? <laughs> 
If Chandler was worried about hurting Ross's feelings, comments like these probably aren't the best way to avoid that. If his soon-to-be brother-in-law heard that remark, he'd deflate faster than his wheezing instrument. How did you know about that? We heard you play all the way from your apartment. Were you the ones who called the cops? <laughs> That's not really important right now. Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Bambi's mom. Oof, right in the childhood. Well, see, now that I can see crying over, but Bambi is a cartoon. You didn't cry when Bambi's mother died? Yes, it was very sad when the guy stopped drawing the deer. Hannibal Lecter. Eddie doesn't even seem like he appreciates a nice Chianti. That's it. It's over. I want you out. I want you out of the apartment now. Oh, what, what are you talking about, man? Hannibal Lecter? <laughs> Better roommate than you. No. <laughs> Lion Tamer. Are we the only ones who think paleontology's cool? Okay. <laughs> no accountants. Oh, and no one from, like, legal. I don't like guys with boring jobs. Oh, and Ross was like, what, a lion tamer? <laughs> Success? Low blows? Can we interest anyone in some low blows? Ross! Okay, maybe it wasn't my best decision, but I just couldn't face another failed marriage. Uh, okay, let me just jump in and ask, at what point did you think this was a successful marriage? <laughs> Number 1. Resolutions Rant New Year's prompts the gang to share their resolutions for the coming trip around the sun. After Chandler mocks some of his friends' aspirations, he makes a bet with Ross to go a week without making fun of them. I'll take that bet, my friend. And you know what? Paying me the 50 bucks can be the new thing you do that day. <laughs> and it starts right now. Unfortunately for Chandler, his friends give him plenty of ammo, from Ross wearing leather pants to Phoebe's regular brand of guitar instruction, to Ross's new girlfriend's name. Oh, guess what? Uh, I, I have a date with uh, Elizabeth Hornswago. <laughs> Hornswago? Oh, this must be killing you. <laughs> the fact that all of them ignore the obvious joke potential is enough to drive Chandler to his wit's end. By the end of the episode, he finally caves and pays Ross, before going off on a rapid-fire rant. One that's strangely satisfying for both him and the audience. And Ross, phone call for you today, Tom Jones. He wants his pants back. <laughs> and Hornswoggle? What are you, dating a character from Fraggle Rock? <laughs> <sighs> Could these moments be any funnier? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 hilarious Chandler moments. <laughs> Whoopa! For this list, we're taking a look at the funniest moments from Chandler Bing. We're excluding moments that made us happy cry like the proposal, as well as moments that involved many members of the group, like Miss Chanen Lervong. I'm not great at the advice. Can I interest you in a sarcastic comment? Number 10, The Taylor Incident. Your Taylor is a very bad man. When Chandler needs some clothing alterations taken care of, he naturally asks the group for advice. Joey has a tailor that he's been seeing for years, so Chandler decides to pay him a visit. He's traumatized upon his return, however, since the tailor has taken advantage of him, well, prison style. Joey's tailor... <laughs> ...took advantage of me. Joey thinks the whole thing is totally normal, asserting that's just how they measure pants. As Ross sides with Chandler, though, Joey makes a startling revelation. Ross, will you tell him? Isn't that how a tailor measures pants? Yes, yes, it is. In prison? <laughs> Chandler's shock is par for the course, and sets the scene early in the show for more hilariously unfortunate incidents that will happen to him. Oh my god. <laughs> Number 9, the cheesecake. You have got to try this cheesecake. There are some natural pairings on this show, from Joey and Chandler, to Monica and Rachel, to Ross and Marcel. But one duo that doesn't get a lot of screen time together is Chandler and Rachel. I'm full. And yet I know if I stop eating this, I'll regret it. This season 7 episode has us wishing desperately that they had been paired up more often, because the aftermath of them eating a series of stolen cheesecakes is just too good. Yeah, the cheesecake came. They delivered it to the wrong address again. <laughs> so just bring it back downstairs, what's the problem? I can't seem to say goodbye. It shows both of their most childish and ridiculous sides, with the two battling until the bitter end over who will get more cake for themselves. Oh, yay, look, there's a piece that doesn't have floor on it. <laughs> Stick to your side. Number eight, the shark porn. Oh, who am I kidding? Pay-per-view porn. The period where Chandler is working halfway across the country in Tulsa, Oklahoma is a tough one for his relationship with Monica. 
When Monica decides to pay him a surprise visit, though, things get even worse. She walks in on Chandler having some personal time, and when he panics to change the channel, he ends up landing on a shark documentary. Well, the weird part is, he was getting off to a shark attack show. <laughs> no! Yes! Chandler watches shark porn! He thinks he's in the clear, but Monica knows what her husband was doing, and therefore assumes that he was pleasuring himself to the sharks on screen. Like every great sitcom joke, this misunderstanding makes for incredible TV. Let me be a part of this. Let me be a part of this. <laughs> I saw what you were doing in Tulsa. Angry sharks turn you on. No, they don't. Number seven, Chandler can't catch things. Oh, oh it's so hard. <laughs> Some of the best Friends episodes involve the characters sitting around doing essentially nothing together. And this one is no exception. Joey and Ross have been absentmindedly throwing a ball back and forth for a while before they realize that hours have passed without them dropping it. Monica, whatever you do, do not drop that ball. Yeah, we haven't dropped it in... Two hours, 27 minutes. Mm. When Monica gets involved, the casual game is unsurprisingly escalated to a full-blown competition. But it's no surprise to anyone that Chandler is the weak link. Four hours? You guys have been doing this for four hours? That's right, baby. All right, let me in. No, 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 don't do it, don't! <laughs> what? He's a dropper. The key moment comes at the very end of the episode, when viewers are treated to a compilation of Chandler dropping things. Yeah, I'm anything but a dropper. Ross! Number six, when he takes a bath. Hello? Yes, we're all in here and we'd love for you to join us. Chandler shows time and time again throughout the show that he isn't exactly secure in his masculinity. All right, this isn't so bad. I like the flowery smell. Which is okay because I've got my boat. So it fits his character perfectly that he would be reluctant to get into the habit of taking baths. Fans will remember that he willingly took a romantic soap with Monica in season 5 when they first started dating. But it takes until season 8 for him to want to bathe solo. When you get out, maybe I can give you a facial. I'm gonna need a bigger boat. This funny plotline ends with a poignant moment, when as the friends are gathered around Chandler in the tub, Ross and Rachel reveal the sex of their baby. Of course, it's Chandler and his boat that ultimately steal the show. We're having a girl! <gasps> oh, wow! Get you later. Number five, Flashback Chandler. I, I'm Ross's little sister. Okay. Flashbacks are used sparingly but effectively on Friends, giving viewers a glimpse into the past and revealing previously unknown information about our favorite characters. In a fan favorite episode, the six friends reminisce about their worst Thanksgivings, and we get to see Chandler in all his college glory, flock of seagulls haircut and all. Oh, no, it's cool. You can stay here. My parents won't mind. No, it's not that. I just want to be stuck here all night with your fat sister. We also get to see the disastrous beginnings of Monica and Chandler's relationship, with Monica wanting to get revenge on Chandler after he called her fat and accidentally cutting his toe off in the process. Four, the Blackout. Great, this is just... In the show's first season, fans were still getting to know the characters, and this iconic episode cemented just how hilarious Chandler can be. When New York experiences a citywide blackout, Chandler gets stuck in an ATM vestibule with Jill Goodacre, a real-life Victoria's Secret model. Would you like to call somebody? Yeah, about 300 guys I went to high school with. <laughs> He panics given the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and tries calling Joey for advice, resulting in a hilarious exchange over the phone. What's up, man? Oh, Kurt? Would you? Oh, my God. He's trapped in an ATM vestibule with Jill Goodacre. Sadly, it wasn't meant to be between Chandler and Jill. But at this point, we knew that Chandler's awkward sense of humor was perfection. You know, on second thought, gum would be perfection. <laughs> gum would be perfection? Number three, advertising brainstorming. Cheese. It's milk that you chew. 
Chandler's job is a constant running joke on the show, due to the fact that none of his friends seem to know exactly what it is that he does. When he decides that he needs to follow his passions and do something that really matters to him, he attempts to enter the advertising industry. A grape! Because who can get a watermelon in your mouth? While we know Chandler can come up with a witty one-liner, his marketing skills leave something to be desired. The phone, bringing you closer to people who have phones. Throughout the episode, he tries out advertising slogans while practicing to impress a new employer. And each one is worse than the last. Bagels and donuts. Round food for every mood. <laughs> Monica warned me you might do that. Number two, all Janice. Oh. My. God! Oh, come on! Did you know that Janice appears at least once in every single season of Friends? Every time she does, it means hilarity will ensue, due to Chandler's wide range of reactions to her. Happy Valentine's Day. Some of our favorite moments are when he's set up on a blind date with her, when he falls in love with her online, and, of course, when he has to buy a plane ticket to Yemen just to get out of dating her again. Well, then I guess I'm going to Yemen! <laughs> I'm going to Yemen! <laughs> Even in the show's final episodes, this relationship manages to get big laughs, as Monica and Chandler have to devise a plan to ensure that they don't end up living beside Janice in their new home. I want you. I need you. I must have you, Janice Littman Goralnik Ney Hosenstein. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Oh, no, no, go! I've scared you. I've said too much. I'm hopeless and awkward and desperate for love. I'm going to say this for the last time. Would you please just... What's that? That's, that's my nubbin. Number one, Phoebe versus Chandler. Come here. I'm very happy we're going to have all the sex. In what's easily one of the best Friends episodes, everyone in the group finally finds out about Monica and Chandler's romantic relationship. Oh, Chandler, Monica! Chandler, Monica! Oh my god! Before this happens, though, a series of events leads to Phoebe seducing Chandler in an effort to call his bluff and get him to admit that he's actually dating Monica. Oh, hello, Mr. Bicep. Their exchange is almost painfully funny with neither willing to back down first and the situation escalating further and further. The end result is not only funny, but touching too, with Chandler finally exclaiming that he loves Monica. Okay, 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 okay you, you win. <laughs> I can't have sex with you. And why not? Because I'm in love with Monica. Could this friend be any funnier? Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most embarrassing things that happened to Chandler. For this list, we're looking at those moments on Friends where Chandler came out looking worse for wear and tasted humiliation that fans won't ever forget. If you haven't seen Chandler's greatest embarrassments yet, then here is your spoiler alert. <laughs> Number 10. Sitting on his father-in-law's lap Chandler's issues with his father are well known, but it seems like he just doesn't have luck with father figures in general. Please welcome the incomparable Helena Handbasket. Hello, Thomas. And there's Daddy. <laughs> After Monica asks Chandler to bond with his soon-to-be father-in-law, things spiral out of his control. While he's initially successful in making Jack like him, even being allowed to call him Dad, Chandler ends up getting too close for comfort. When he's momentarily blinded in the steam room, Chandler scrambles for a seat only to realize he's landed on Jack's lap. So I take off my glasses and that's when it happened. Guys? Over here. Have a seat, son. <laughs> hey! Horrified and embarrassed, he has to endure his friend's humiliating remarks of bonding with his father-in-law. I know you wanted to bond with my dad, but did you really have to bond to that part? <laughs> Unfortunately, his embarrassment doubles by the end when he shows way more of himself to Jack than he ever wanted. So, I guess we wear swimsuits in here. <laughs> Number 9. Trying to impress Jill Goodacre in his younger days, Chandler went through a long period alone in search of love. Oh, no, no, go! I've scared you. I've said too much. I'm hopeless and awkward and desperate for love. <laughs> 
of his earlier potential romances was with Jill Goodacre, a gorgeous model clearly out of his league. Upon being trapped with Jill in an ATM vestibule during a blackout, Chandler endlessly debates in his mind how to approach her. After some prodding from Joey over the phone, he decides to play it cool, but only manages to make Jill uncomfortable through his awkward wordplay. You know, on second thought, gum would be perfection. <laughs> gum would be perfection? Accidentally spitting out the stick of gum Jill offered him, Chandler ends up choking when he realizes he's put somebody else's gum back in his mouth. Although he pretends everything's fine at first, he almost passes out before Jill comes to his rescue. Number 8. Taking a bubble bath and having all the friends witness it After Monica convinces Chandler to take a bath, he starts to fall in love with it, but finds himself unable to successfully draw them as well as she does. So he ends up stealing a bath that Monica drew for herself. Before she can exit the bathroom, though, Phoebe barges in, followed by Joey himself, then Rachel and, of course, Ross to complete things full circle. Hello? Yes, we're all in here and we'd love for you to join us. <laughs> Meanwhile, Chandler's bubbles are slowly and inadvertently showing more of himself than he'd like, causing the friends to comment and causing Monica to tell him to cover up with a toy boat. What are we all doing in here? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Honey, cover it up with the boat. <laughs> it ends with Ross and Rachel revealing the sex of their baby, resulting in hugs all around, while Chandler awkwardly says, I'll, I'll get you later. <laughs> Number 7. Swallowing a Toy Gun Known for his childish antics and fun-loving personality, Chandler wasn't considered a suitable parental figure by his friends until the end of the series. If something were to happen to Ross or myself, um, you wouldn't get the baby. Well, who would? Well, we haven't officially asked them yet, but we would want Monica and Chandler. He's seen at his most juvenile when he helps to take care of Phoebe's nieces and nephew. After he doesn't exactly have the time of his life changing the baby's diapers, Chandler tries to make playtime more fun by bringing over an unsuitable toy figure. Check it out, check it out. When the babies wake up, they can meet Krug. <laughs> However, in his attempt to prove the toy's safety, he accidentally swallows its gun. All right. <clears throat> I thought about it, and maybe you're right. Maybe Krog is not a safe toy. Oh, good. What made you change your mind? I swallowed a sonic blaster gun. <laughs> After spending the rest of the episode struggling to breathe with the gun lodged in his throat, Chandler then has to be taken to the emergency room. By the end, his recurring commitment issues ensure another meltdown. You're right. I shouldn't freak out. Because this is what it's going to be like when you and I have babies. When will that be? <laughs> Phoebe, would you take a look at this mess? <laughs> Number 6. Hooking up with Bob's girlfriend It seems as if fate has decided to smile on Chandler when he receives a call on his answering machine from a seductive woman named Jade. I barely had the nerve to make this call, so you know what I did? What? <laughs> I got a little drunk and naked. Bob here. <laughs> in order to have a chance with her, Chandler pretends to be Bob, the person Jade meant to call, and arranges a date at the coffee shop. Swooping in as a kind and trustful stranger with a heart of gold, Chandler manages to win Jade over, making her believe Bob's abandoned her. Listen, I have to, um, uh, um, I have to, I have to confess something. Yes? Whoever stood you up is a jerk. <laughs> I don't know. Unfortunately, after he brags to Ross about hooking up with Jade, he receives another call from her. Still believing it to be Bob's number, Jade shares Chandler's unsatisfactory performance in excruciating detail. Speechless, he painfully learns the exact reason why Jade found the experience so awkward. Oh, Bob, he was nothing compared to you. <laughs> I had to bite my lip to keep from screaming your name. Well, that makes me feel so good. It was just so awkward and bumpy. <laughs> Number 5. Getting Stuck in a Box After wrestling with his feelings for Joey's girlfriend Kathy for a long time, Chandler crosses the line when he and Kathy kiss, prompting her to break up with Joey. I forgot my purse. Oh. Facing no other option to earn an enraged Joey's forgiveness, Chandler is forced to lie in a box for hours in order to prove his loyalty. This was in response to the time when Joey had been locked in a TV cabinet during a robbery. If we still had that entertainment unit, I would get in there for six hours and think about how I let you down.
What? We got a box. While the other friends gather for Thanksgiving dinner, Chandler is left trapped in the box. And when he angers Joey for not taking things seriously, he's forced to stay completely silent. The worst part is when Kathy arrives to say goodbye. And all Chandler can do is sadly finger wave her away. Goodbye, Chandler. <laughs> Number four, being ridiculed for having a third nipple. When Monica finds out that Chandler shared her secret with Phoebe, she gets back at him by revealing one of his greatest insecurities. I didn't know it was a big secret. <laughs> no, it's not big. Not at all. You know, kind of the same lines as, say, oh, I don't know, having a third nipple. <gasps> now outed for having a third nipple, Chandler is pestered by his friends for the remainder of the episode to share more details about it. So what's it shaped like? Yeah, is there a hair on it? What happens if you flick it? And while he tries to deflect his embarrassment with his usual brand of sarcastic remarks, Ross still manages to come up with creative jokes at his expense. His unusual anatomy truly comes to haunt him in his romance with Ginger, who, upon discovering his nubbin, quickly finds a reason to end their relationship. I... I just remembered I have to leave. You, uh... You have, to, you have to leave now? How come? Oh, well, it's nubbin. Nothing. Um, <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm, I'll see you later. Maybe this was karma for all the times Chandler had broken up with girls for superficial reasons. My God, that's a big head. <laughs> it didn't look this big in the office. Maybe it's the lighting. My head must look like a golf ball at work. <laughs> Number three, accidentally telling a child he's adopted. No matter how many times Chandler tries to convince his friends he can keep a secret, his actions tell us otherwise. I didn't think you could keep it a secret. What? <laughs> I am an excellent secret keeper. I have kept all of our secrets. In this episode, Phoebe sets Monica and Chandler up to meet her friends Bill and Colleen to learn about the adoption process, which spirals into disaster. When Chandler meets young Owen, he leaves the child horrified by accidentally revealing that he's adopted. I'd love to, but I gotta get back to talking to your parents. They're telling us all about how they adopted you. What? <laughs> what? I'm adopted? Not knowing how to deal with the situation, he attempts to bribe Owen to secrecy, but is busted in front of Bill and Colleen. He told me! <laughs> and he paid me $50 not to tell. Which technically now you should give back. To make matters much worse, Chandler's blithering attempts to apologize result in a traumatized Owen learning the truth about Santa Claus. And he and Monica have no choice but to escape. Owen doesn't know he's adopted, and he also thinks Santa is real. He isn't? <laughs> we have to get out of here, baby! Number two, getting handcuffed in Joanna's office. Whether it's fighting over cheesecakes or sharing awkward moments, Rachel and Chandler's stories always steer out of control. Let's not say anything else. I love you. <laughs> mm, not so tight. <laughs> oh! <laughs> so it's no surprise Chandler's romance with Rachel's boss, Joanna, came back to haunt him. After attempting to break up with Joanna upon Rachel's urging, Chandler is instead seduced in her office. You're not the boss of me. <laughs> yeah, you are. Unfortunately, he's left handcuffed to a chair for hours when Joanna leaves for a meeting. An angered Rachel refuses to help Chandler upon discovering him. With nowhere to go, Chandler begs her to set him free, but ends up in a scuffle over his pants. Well, this is much better. When all his attempts to convince Rachel fail, he's forced to make a deal with her to stay, which doesn't last long as Joey exposes his lies. Hello. Hey. hey. Hello, Chandler. I love you. Hey, well, what's going on? Oh. No, he doesn't. <laughs> I mean, hasn't that happened to all of us at one time or another? No? Well, the man, also known as Miss Chenandler Bong, has gone through many more embarrassing moments. So let's look at the honorable mentions, and then we'll find out which Chandler life event we'd least like to live through. Hey, Eddie. Stop! <laughs> what are you doing here? Nothing, Rumi, just watching you sleep. Why? Makes me feel, um, 
peaceful. <laughs> okay, 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 fine, you, you win. I can't have sex with you. And why not? Because I'm in love with Monica. You're, you're what? Hey, man. Hey. You start on the image of a guy putting on the shoes. He's about my age. Your age? Uh-huh. <laughs> Sir, a ticket to Yemen is $2,100, and we don't take library cards. What's the matter? Is something wrong? Do you have to stay? American Express. <laughs> Number one, getting stuck in a bathroom stall without his clothes. Talk about a blast from the past. Chandler's past hit him right in the face. When he runs into Susie Moss, his former classmate from elementary school, he's pleasantly surprised to learn she's interested in him. After they begin dating, Susie presses him to be more adventurous and propositions him in a bathroom stall during dinner. I want you right here, right now. Right now, right here? Don't you think we're in kind of a public play? <laughs> they do have the shrimp. Meet me in the bathroom. To Chandler's horror, though, she steals his clothes and reveals her true intentions. Having concocted an elaborate plan to get back at Chandler for humiliating her at school, she leaves him stranded and wearing only her panties to feel a similar shame. What, what do you mean? What do I mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? I mean underpants, mister. That's what I mean. <laughs> what? Watch what you mean. My skirt? You lifted kids laughing? When Ross and Joey's arrival only brings in further jokes at his expense, a desperate Chandler has no choice but to step out in public in all his glory. <clears throat> I'm Chandler, I make jokes when I'm uncomfortable. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Chandler Bing quotes from friends. For me, gum is perfection. I'm not great at the advice. Can I interest you in a sarcastic comment? I've scared you. I've said too much. I'm hopeless and awkward and desperate for love. For this list, we'll be going over some of the funniest lines spoken by Chandler Bing from the sitcom Friends. Number 10, a complete nightmare. Chandler arguably has worse luck with women than Joey and Ross. So, when the latter finds himself having to choose between Rachel and his then-girlfriend Julie, Chandler is less than sympathetic. I don't know what I'm gonna do. What am I gonna do? I mean, this, this is like a complete nightmare. Chandler compares having the love of two gorgeous women to other non-problems, like having a wallet too small for $50 bills, or having ill-fitting diamond shoes. Oh, I know. This must be so hard. Oh no, two women love me. They're both gorgeous and sexy. My wall is too small for my 50s, and my diamond shoes are too tight. This is some classic Chandler sarcasm, and it's a line we love to bust out ourselves whenever someone we know complains needlessly. What's that? Fueling your private jet costs too much? That must be so terrible. Number nine, a bad situation. During season four, Chandler finds his friendship with Joey tested like never before. That was Joey, he's running a little late, and he says he's sorry. So, oh, I guess it's just uh, you and me then. The cause is the fact that he finds himself falling for Joey's girlfriend, Kathy. The two of them have incredible chemistry. And one night, when Joey's out with another girl, they act on their feelings with a kiss. I forgot my purse. Oh. After the initial joy wears off, both realize what they've done. Chandler makes the suggestion that they swallow their feelings, even if they're unhappy forever. Hey, here's what we do. We, we forget it happened. What? Okay, we, we swallow our feelings, even if it means we're unhappy forever. Sound good? The fact that he sarcastically asks Kathy if this idea sounds good makes this otherwise dramatic scene hilarious. Number eight, uncomfortable. This one pretty much sums Chandler up in a nutshell, as well as anyone else who uses humor to ease tension or to get themselves out of a sticky situation. Oh my God. I know, but just let me say it. Oh my God, Richard. What? I'm Chandler. <laughs> oh, that's Richard. Be forewarned though, this technique could backfire and you may have to resort to being candid instead. 
Chandler learned this firsthand when he and Monica bumped into Monica's ex, Richard, and his date on the very same night that Chandler intended to propose. Hey. Monica, Chandler. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Surprised by the unexpected turn of events, they begin by exchanging pleasantries, and Chandler makes small talk the only way he knows how, by cracking a joke. I see you got your mustache back. Well, my nose got lonely. <laughs> And uh, you don't have a mustache, which is good. Noticing that his quip about Lisa's mustache, or lack thereof, doesn't go over too well, he quickly introduces himself with this. And it couldn't be any more perfect. I'm Chandler, I make jokes when I'm uncomfortable. Number seven, tanning. Ross's experience with getting a spray on tan leads to all manner of hilarity. How do I know when it's gonna start? Hello? <laughs> The hapless guy makes several crucial mistakes during the process, leading to his ultimately getting a quadruple dose of the spray on his front. In between sessions, he goes to Monica and Chandler's apartment and shows off the unfortunate results that have him looking like, well, this. Hold on, there's something different. Upon telling Chandler he went to the place his wife suggested, Chandler has a small inquiry. I went to that tanning place your wife suggested. Was that place? The Sun? It's a classic sarcastic Chandler moment, and punctuates what's already a funny situation, making it even funnier. Number 6. Scottish Getting married can be a stressful event, and while friends and family can often offer support and aid, they can also be a source of stress. What is that? I think it's the dying cat parade. Such is the case for Monica and Chandler when they discover what Ross has planned for their wedding. One day, the two of them overhear loud, poorly played bagpipe music coming from across the street. They're horrified to discover that it's Ross, with Chandler realizing that Ross plans to play at their wedding, after Ross asked him earlier about his Scottish heritage. You know that thing that Ross was going to do at our wedding? He was hanging out with me yesterday and he turned to me and he said, you're half Scottish, right? When Monica rhetorically demands to know why his family is Scottish, Chandler shoots back, Why is your family Ross? The man has some dang witty replies, and this is one of our favorites. Number five, gum. Oh great, this is just... Early on in Friends, we get one of the funniest Chandler storylines of all. During a blackout, Chandler is separated from the rest of the gang and trapped in an ATM vestibule. There's good news and bad news. The good news, he's trapped in there with supermodel Jill Goodacre. Would you like to call somebody? Yeah, about 300 guys I went to high school with. <laughs> the bad news, he's trapped in there with supermodel Jill Goodacre. We're offered a rare glimpse into Chandler's neurotic inner thoughts as he stresses out over every little thing. Even something as simple as being offered gum sends him into knots. What the hell was that? <laughs> Mental note, if Jill Goodacre offers you gum, you take it. If she offers you mangled animal carcass, you take it. However, it leads to one of his funniest quotes, in which Chandler claims that her offer of gum would be perfection. You know, on second thought, gum would be perfection. This is the kind of awkward quote that makes Chandler very relatable. Gum would be perfection. Could have said gum would be nice, could have said I'll have a stick, but no, 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 no. For me, gum is perfection. <laughs> I loathe myself. Number four, Parachute. Ross's ex-wife having a baby brings out lots of reactions in the group as they spend hours in the waiting room. No fair. I don't even have one. How come they get two? You'll get one. Oh yeah? When? Monica in particular feels envious of the new mother she sees. Chandler, trying to help out, posits that if neither of them are married by the time they reach the age of 40, they could get together and have children. When we're 40, if neither of us are married, what do you say you and I get together and have one? However, Monica responds by wondering why he thinks she won't be married at 40. Caught off guard, Chandler panics and eventually jokes that what he thought was an imaginary parachute is actually a knapsack, even diving over the back of his chair. Uh, uh... Well? Dear God, this, this parachute is a knapsack! <laughs> it's a great moment that not only foreshadows his relationship with Monica, but is hysterical and sympathetic to boot. We've all found ourselves in a situation like this. Number three, advice. The friendship between Joey and Rachel is usually fairly strong. However, things get awkward between them after Joey confesses to being in love with her while on a friend date. 
Worried over what to do, Rachel asks Monica and Chandler. And while Chandler offers a reassurance that things will get better with time, Rachel presses him for specific advice. I know it's tough now, but things will get better. How do you know that? What if it just gets worse and worse and worse to the point where we can't even be in the same room with each other? This quote is another one that perfectly encapsulates Chandler as a character. I'm not great at the advice. Can I interest you in a sarcastic comment? <laughs> cheese. Sarcasm is definitely his wheelhouse, and we certainly defer to his expertise in that area. That's kind of what this list is about. Cheese is still good consolation, though. Number two, Hopeless in Love. Oh, you didn't have to do this. Yes, I did. Yes, I did, because you're my girlfriend, and that's what girlfriends should, should get. When Chandler begins dating Janice, Again, he worries about commitment, but he takes the guy's advice and decides to face his fear. Unfortunately, it goes a little too well. And I want to meet your parents. We should take a trip with your parents. In his eagerness to commit to Janice, he begins suggesting things that are way too much, way too fast. This scares Janice away, which Chandler even realizes in the moment. Hold on, don't go. I've scared you. I've said too much. I'm hopeless and awkward and desperate for love. This might be his most relatable quote of all. Of course, not all of us chase down our love interests on the street, but most of us have had some pretty desperate moments in our pursuit of love. Hey, Janice, it's me. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I just wanted to apologize in advance for having chased you down the street. <laughs> Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Bo Peep. From that smirk he gives, you can tell he's proud of this one. Hey! I'm sorry, we don't have your sheep. Knock knock. Doorknobs, meanwhile, prefer turns of phrase. I'm funny, right? What do you know? You're a door. You just like knock knock jokes. Save it for inside. Nervous. We understand this was a common problem for early hominins. No, no, Homo habilis was erect. Australopithecus was never fully erect. Well, maybe he was nervous. Running into Janice. The rest of Destiny's Child, on the other hand. What a small world. And yet I never run into Beyonce. Electric Drill. Joey Tribbiani. Handyman? Oh, sorry, did I get you? <laughs> no, you didn't get me. It's an electric drill. You get me, you kill me! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Q-tip. While Joey and Chandler are totally best friend goals, Chandler can sometimes be exasperated by his buddy's seeming lack of intelligence. Hey. Anybody know a good tailor? This arguably reaches its peak when he asks Joey for help in finding a tailor. Joey recommends a guy he's been going to for years and struggles to remember not only what age he was when he got his first suit, but also when 1990 was. Why don't you go see Frankie? My family's been going to him forever. He did my first suit when I was 15. No, wait, 16. No, excuse me, 15. <laughs> All right, when was 1990? Chandler delivers an epic burn on the source of Joey's memory troubles. Okay, you have to stop the Q-tip when there's resistance. Although his sarcasm at Joey's advice on what to say to his tailor when Chandler sees him is also gold, this Q-tip quote is not only our favorite, but also reportedly Matthew Perry's too. Chandler, when you see Frankie, tell him Joey Tribbiani says hello. He'll know what it means. <laughs> you sure he's gonna be able to crack that code? Please share your favorite Chandler quote in the comments below. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.